Yeah, it looks like we still have um, folks who are hopping into the Zoom. So please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat if you'd like to while we wait for folks maybe to get connected. <laughs> Nice to see some familiar names <laughs> and new names. See, we've got Eastern time zone, mountain time zone, it looks like. <laughs> ah, Philippines, all right. Spreading ourselves out a bit. Oh, California. We got Nigeria. <laughs> oh, fantastic. All right. Well, I think we're we're probably slowing down a bit with folks coming in. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, welcome to the 2022 Board Information Night. Um, I am Jen Rosado, and I am the past chair of the board. So that means that I am chair of the nominations and elections committee this year. Um, I would just like to take a moment to introduce and let the folks who are part of the nominations and elections committee this year say hi. So again, Jen Rosado and uh, Dan, do you want to say hi? Hi, this is, I'm Dan Blyer. I'm the chair of the CSDA board. Looking forward to seeing all the uh, different candidates we get this year. I don't think Charity is able to be with us. Oh no, there she is. Oh, she is here on vacation. All right, Charity. <laughs> Just don't tell my partner. Hello, everyone. <laughs> my name is Charity Freeman. Pronouns are she, her. Um, here as an appointed member of the um, of CSTA's Board of Directors and its Nominations and Elections Committee. So excited to see all so many folks that came tonight or today or whatever time it is where you are. Thanks, Charity. Audra? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Audra Kaplan. I'm the uh, K-8 rep, and uh, this is my first time helping out with this committee, so I'm really excited to be here, um, and I'm looking forward to um, learning a little bit more about all of you. Christine? Hi, Christine Shabram. I'm the other K-8 representative on the board, and I'm also the uh, 2022 conference chair. And Jake. And of course, this is when people join the waiting room. But uh, hey, everyone, I'm Jake Baskin. I'm the executive director of CSTA uh, and uh, excited for this meeting because this is where you all get to hear about what, uh, what it's like to be my boss. <laughs> Um, yes, the board is the boss of Jake. Um, welcome to folks who are just joining us. You are uh, welcome to introduce yourself in the chat, say hi, drop a message in there. Um, you're also welcome to ask questions in the chat throughout and we'll pause occasionally too to answer those or see if there's um, other questions and then um, I don't think the presentation is going to take the whole time, so hopefully there's lots of time for conversation at the end and people just to ask um, informal questions about, you know, what does the board do? What does it mean to serve on the board? So a couple of slides to go through just to explain the process and the application and then um, definitely uh, plenty of time for questions. So here is the timeline. Um, applications are now open. There's both an application form and a nomination form. So if you um, received the email, then you'll notice that uh, we have both, both of those. The nominations form is to recommend to someone else that they submit an application to be a board member. Um, and then the application form is for you yourself to um, fill out the application and apply to be a board member. Those applications 
um, are due by March 15th. They'll close um, in the middle of March. The ballots then um, will be distributed by April 8th. So in between March 15th and April 8th, the committee um, and I will be working to narrow down the list of candidates to two per um, position. And then um, we'll create the ballot from that and distribute it. And then uh, CSTA plus members will vote on it throughout April. Um, voting will close at the end of April on the 29th, and then we'll announce the election results on May 10th. If you're here listening in, or if you are um, you know, working with a chapter or things like that, we just wanna maybe ask you to please encourage folks to vote in the election as well. That is one of the ways that um, as a PLUS member, you can make your voice heard in shaping the, the board. Hey Jen, can I correct something real quick? Uh, you said two candidates, there'll be three candidates. Oh, my apologies. Thank you. Okay, so uh, this year we have a number of board vac vacancies. Um, so Christine is rotating off. Um, she has been a K-8 teacher represent representative for several years. Um, so we need a new K-8 teacher representative. We also need a new 912 teacher representative. We need an at-large representative. So K-8 and 912 means that you are teaching primarily elementary and middle school, and then 912 means you're teaching primarily high school. We do want these folks to um, have at least some time in the classroom teaching students. You could be somebody who's a, a TOSA teacher on special assignment for part of your duties, but we want you to be in the um, classroom as well. An at-large representative could be somebody who's not a teacher, somebody who works at a nonprofit organization, um, somebody who is in higher education, although we have multiple higher education openings um, this year as well. But one of those like affiliated areas that's just really invested and interested in, um, in uh, um, supporting computer science teachers. So the college university representative um, and then the teacher education representative, both of those are usually higher education positions. So the college university is one who's usually in some kind of computer science, computer information systems um, sort of department and brings that um, higher ed CS background. And then the teacher ed representative um, is somebody who comes from a teacher preparation program that um, is working with computer science teachers in some way. All right. And then we have an international representative and a State Department representative um, position um, open this year as well. So that's the full list of positions. Anybody have any questions right now about like what those are and what it means to be eligible for each of those before I move on? Actually, Jen, we do have a question uh, posed oh, by yeah. Rudy. Could an at-large representative be a county office person? Absolutely. At large can be anyone. Dan, and in fact, Dan Blyer is kind of our person who's the like district level representative and because he's chair, that position won't open up for a couple of years. So if you're a district level person, then it's probably best to run for at large at this point. You can get there 11 persons in the room. Uh, well, 12, including myself. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Well, think about it. And if you have more questions, just let us know. And um, the in terms of your term, if you're elected to the board, this is what you're committing to. Um, so your term of office, we would want to um, provide you some kind of orientation to the, the CSTA board in May to get you up to speed and ready to serve. Your official term starts in July of this year. Um, the board meets at the conference just after it, and then you would serve for two years and your term would expire in 2024 when you can run for re-election again. So it's a two-year term. We would ask that you um, participate in some activities before your official um, term starts, but those are just to help you be prepared to serve um, starting in July. Uh, Rudy, is that the only position that could work for the county office people? Um, given the list, I think that probably is the only position that works for the county office people this year. 
in the future there is a district position and that might be um, an option in future years, but this year the at large is the only option. Okay, I think this is where I turn it over to Christine. All right, thanks, Jim. So some of the responsibilities as a board member are one to oversee like the long term health of this DSTA organization. So that might include planning, uh, policies and finances. Um, another responsibility is to attend quarterly quarterly meetings. So we have two in person in person meetings, which are July and then January, February. And then we also have two virtual board meetings that are in October, October and May. And then um, other responsibility would just be to maintain your CSTA plus membership throughout your two year term. Okay. Um, additional responsibilities are to just attend all meetings and be an active participant. Uh, we have standing committees within our board. So those would be include like the audit, the conference committee, awards, nominations, um, uh, elections committee, communications, professional development, international. And then uh, also be a part of like specific project work. So we have lots of different task force forces within the board uh, that work on specific things, um, support chapter leaders. Um, so lots of projects that you can be a part of as being a board member. And then last thing that I'm going to chat about is just what makes a good member. Um, so I think a given is just to be very passionate about uh, CS education and supporting um, educators. I feel back, mom. I think also just I feel back. What? Oh, I feel back. I'm sorry, Katrina. Thank you. I'm so sorry. That's okay. So um, just to kind of start over, just having a passion for CS education and a passion for supporting CS educators, also just kind of having an understanding of K-12 CS education landscape, advocating for CSTA's missions um, and building our community, and then just kind of showcasing some of those uh, leadership skills, such as communication, engagement, diversity, um, having, um, you know, bringing bringing your opinion to the, to the table, but also um, just being open to other people's opinions and having different perspectives. I think now I'll turn it over to Dan, unless anybody has any questions about res board responsibilities. Can I actually go back one slide? I'd like to give an example. Um, I feel like a lot of folks when it comes to uh, some of these qualifications is like, oh, leadership skills. Oh, but I've never been on a board of directors before. Or the only finances I manage are the ones that pertain to my household. Ah, well, that also includes uh, that last part, diversity of thought and perspectives. For example, as a member of the nominations and elections committee, one of the things that I brought to the table was as we were going through our uh, application that we use every year and the one that you all will hopefully be completing soon, yay. Um, one of the items on there included our address. And I'm like, well, I actually would like it if we didn't ask candidates for their address, just for, of course, there's privacy issues there, but also for the sake of uh, diversity. I live in Chicago and in the city of Chicago, if I know your zip code, I know what you look like. And so if that means that that's just, if that means it's for some people that might be something that doesn't make them feel comfortable or makes them feel, um, you know, just kind of exposed or just something, information that they're not comfortable with sharing. It's not essential information. Can we remove it? And it was. That would be an example of diversity of thought and perspectives, whatever you can bring to the table. I get bring that in from, I brought that experience with me from a previous career in workforce development. I taught my kids not to put their addresses on their resumes and brought that with me here. I think that would be an example of just something that you can bring from another experience to this one. And those thoughts and those ideas and perspectives are very much welcome on uh, CSTA's board of directors. And maybe just on the financial statements uh, side too, part of the onboarding is to give you some professional development around understanding our financial statements and just how we look at our financial picture um, and what our strategic plan is and things along those lines. And so, you know, we don't drop you into it. We want to support you in serving in this role.
All right, before I move on to the other uh, slides, just a couple quick things. Uh, we mentioned that uh, you needed to be a CSTA plus member for the term, for the entire term. Uh, if there is a financial issue with that, then you should talk with, uh, with myself or Jen uh, so that we can uh, work with you to solve that, uh, that issue. So don't, uh, don't count the CSDA plus as a, a barrier for entry uh, in your case. And then also Jake mentioned in the chat that uh, CSDA does pay for all travel when we're going in person. So uh, none of that comes out of your pocket or if it does, it's reimbursed uh, after the fact. Um, so looking at the application, uh, we first we want to kind of find out why you want to serve on the, on the CSTA board uh, and what are some of the things that you would like to accomplish. Uh, it really helps us to see kind of where your passion is and why, um, why you think you should be a, a member of the board. Um, and then, you know, what are some things that you're doing, uh, you know, related to some of the current CSTA activities? Like, how are you engaging uh, with us uh, as an organization? Uh, I'm going to share in this uh, in the chat the link to the uh, rubric. Hopefully, it works for everybody. Here it is. Yeah, I think I clicked it before you did, Dan. Well, oh, oh, well, <laughs> there we go. Now you got it in there twice. <laughs> um, so you'll notice that the first question is 800 characters. Um, so that kind of uh, we did extend last year where we had. Um, actually, it was I think it was 500 characters. So we did uh, expand it a little bit last year to allow you to uh, share a little bit more information uh, about yourself and your passions uh, related to serving on the board. Um, the second question um, is all about your leadership experience. Um, you know, whether it's in CSDA as a, like a chapter leader. Or it's you know you're being a classroom um, teacher, uh, other uh, like running uh, meetings and professional learning. Uh, if you've worked in industry and you've been in like management or anything like that, those are all skills that will be very helpful to us to know um, and are very helpful for that diversity of thought on the CSTA board. So uh, please share everything that you think is. Uh, relevant to you um, so that we have a full picture of who you are. Uh, it's really helpful for us to have a full picture of uh, all the skills you bring to the board because sometimes we'll be looking at our own uh, existing board and seeing, hey, it would be great if we had these couple of skills. And if you're checking off some of those skills, uh, that may move you to the front of the line over, um, you know, over other applications. And again, that would be a 800 uh, character answer. Uh, also talk about your state, national, and international um, advocacy work, any policy work, uh, if you've been doing anything around pre-service uh, program development, uh, if you're working uh, in uh, curriculum development uh, or supporting your teachers uh, in your own community, especially like as a chapter leader, you're definitely doing that. Uh, so, you know, share all those different things that are about you. I mean, the other piece, too, is those other skills. Uh, you know, having the ability to uh, understand finance and budgeting, um, you know, being able to look at a bigger picture around the strategic planning, um, you know, being able to engage other, uh, you know, people uh, around the initiatives that CSTA is doing, or even at this point, getting people to come and vote uh, during the election period is a, is a huge um, thing that we're always looking for uh, as we go through this process. That was my last slide, or was there one more? Yes, there's one more. I was going to talk a little bit about this one. Um, so yeah, describing experiences you've had with CSTA. Um, I remember my first meeting back in, I think it was 2014, learning about the Hour of Code for the first time. and. Um, getting involved in conferences. We've held a couple New England conferences. Um, we've done things like having book shares and lesson shares, just anything at all that you may do in your own classroom or you might do um, in other CSTA uh, meetups 
to share the CS love and get more teachers involved and just network with other um, like-minded people and, and what kinds of things are, are you doing with computer science um, in your chapters. Um, and that's also another 800 character question. Um, so yeah. <laughs> On the other side of that coin, Audra, we have had uh, applicants in the past who have indicated an interest in being a member of the board of directors for a CSTA and they have no prior experience mm -hmm. with CSTA. Now, my, if that it, it does kind of suit your story, that's okay. How about we get some of those experiences, we join a local chapter, we participate in the annual CSTA conference as an attendee or maybe present at one of our CSTA equity and action summits, etc. Find ways to engage with CSTA and then dun, 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 prepare to submit an application next year or in two years. Yay, there are ways if that is uh, to be a member of the board of directors if that is uh, a a goal or a desire for you let's uh, make sure that you love csc as much as we do at least understand the reasons why it's so lovable <laughs> yay apologize yeah, I don't have the slides for me to know who was assigned for this one or who was going to take it. If not, I can take it, but. I think this was probably me, <laughs> which I'm is why everyone charity. else was quiet. <laughs> no problem. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, this for this question, describe the experiences and perspectives you bring to supporting equitable participation in computing and make sure that you provide an example of your commitment in action. Um, so examples may include um, addressing various levels of equity, including but not limited to access and availability of the CS education, of CS knowledge, of CS resources to all of your students, um, diversity, which includes uh, student participation that is reflective of the overall demographics of your school building or your district or what have you, your area of domain, or inclusion which means making sure that all students are engaged and learning computer science. Um, I'll give a, a really uh, interesting example that I've seen before is, yeah, in order to boost the recruitment to our school's AP CSP courses, we built a website and we made it in the color pink because we want to recruit girls. Not, not quite, not quite the uh, the fervor we're going for. <laughs> Yay, that's a, a good start. But what specific actions are you taking to increasing or addressing the issues of equity as they pertain to access, diversity, and inclusion via actual relationships built either with your students, with various stakeholders that could include also parents as stakeholders in student education uh, in CS. That could be another route that you'd like to take. Um, but there are lots of different ways to address this question. I'm just making sure that we are keeping in mind that equity is achieved through action. And so we would love to see some of those action verbs da -da -da -da, to the rescue and uh, allowing us to see uh, some of those ways that you are actively getting our students and their families engaged in CS. I would just chime in, Charity, that I think this is often really dependent on what role you have. So if I'm a classroom teacher, I'm probably very focused on thinking about my students and those parents and what's going on in my school building. If I'm the county super, um, the county person for um, computer science, district person for computer science, then I'm probably thinking about teacher training, um, sequence of courses, the, you know, requirements to get into courses. So really, you know, not everyone is going to be coming with the same kinds of experiences and be thinking about what you bring to the table there. And everyone I'm sure is bringing something to the table. So call it out.
Okay. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but again, um, there is a nomination form and an application form. The nomination form can be used by anyone to encourage others to complete the application. So uh, sometimes folks just need a nudge. Um, one of the strategies we often talk about recruiting students to high school computer science courses is the personal recommendation, tap them on the shoulder, give them a note, send them an email to say, I think you would be good at this. So that same strategy would work great. If you think there's somebody who would be great to serve on the board or would be good at doing that, please use the nomination form to give them that little tap on the shoulder and a little bit of encouragement that they might need to say, I can do this, I might be a fit for that role um, and serving on the board. And then the other one is the actual application form um, used by the candidate to submit um, the answers to those um, questions and then some basic contact information so that we can reach out to them. Um, so I think, did we get those links dropped in the chat? Yes, yeah. great, thank you so much, Jake. All right, and then that brings us to the more, um, more open Q&A part of the, the session tonight. So I know some folks had questions. Did we get all of um, those that were in the chat addressed? I think all so. Right. And, and okay. as folks are maybe thinking of any other questions they wanna share, I just wanna add also, uh, I think this really, um, gives a, a broad perspective of what we're looking for in the applications and a high level idea of the, the activities of board members, but to, to uh, just give a, a little more context in what's coming um, and, and why I value the board so much. Um, I'm really proud to be, represent CSTA as the executive director because the board is elected from our membership. Uh, we're the only organization where there are teachers and administrators and folks that are directly working in the space that are the leaders in making, making the directional decisions about the organization. And I think it's really unique and exciting to have that. Um, and so really hope you'll everyone here will consider applying. Um, and also looking ahead along with those specific aspects of some exciting opportunities over the next couple of years to really think about what the next five years of CSTA looks like. And so folks that are coming on the board will get to be part of that conversation and really help us um, think about how CSTA can grow, what programs we should offer that serve the members most effectively uh, and, and be, be involved in those uh, strategic decisions for, for the organization. Notice Rudy uh, just entered a question in the chat. Is there, are you asking about the limit of pages for the resume that should be uploaded with your application? Yes. One to two pages would be ideal. Um, we don't necessarily need a CV to accompany your application, um, but as much as, as you feel comfortable with, one to two pages would be preferred. Any other questions? I was going to say, you're also welcome to ask us. You know, there's plenty of board members here tonight, um, too. Um, so there are some other board members that are not part of the nominations and elections committee, um, Art and Cindy and folks. Uh, you are welcome to just ask us questions in general about what it's like to serve on the board, what kind of projects we're working on, things like that, too. I think you all are quiet because you're feverishly working on your applications and or completing <laughs> your nominations forms to tell folks, ooh, you'd be great for this opportunity. Maybe we can chime in some of the things we're doing just to, you know, share with everyone. You know, um, I, uh, I'm, my name's Art Lopez. I serve on the board of directors as a nine to 12 representative. And yes, it is wonderful to be Jake's boss. Um, <laughs> um, I, I think I've, when I, uh, when I first started applying, um, I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to do something like this, but it was, I think you come from a perspective of what really helped me is, you know, why exactly do I want to serve on the board? And, uh, I started a while ago in computer science education, uh, and I, 
always came from the point of view is like, uh, how can we provide equitable educational learning opportunities for children in our communities? And uh, CS education is really limited in the communities I work in, brown and black communities. And I also didn't know anything about computer science. I don't have a computer science background. I, I took one programming class in 1979, punch cards, Fortran, it was not fun. And so what I must say is like, I really needed help in thinking about how to, you know, provide instruction to kids that was fun, you know, engaging, rigorous, but all inclusive. And that's what drove me into this space. And I, I met a lot of the people here over the years, but uh, it's, um, it, it's something I'm very, very passionate about. I really want to help my peers and the people I work with to strive to do what we can to help each other out within the community and really focus on what, what's the best way I can help out kids so they have these opportunities and, and we could just empower them and engage them and have them think about taking courses in computer science. And so, and a lot of the things that, you know, Jen, you made a really uh, compelling note in the, in the, uh, in the chat. I, I do not have a background in managing finances or, you know, financial statements, you know, and I, it was, I learned a lot though, but I think if you also have a willingness to learn, that's something that's just, you know, you could just mention that because that's what I said. And I thought that was really helpful, but uh, I, I'll tell you right now, it's all volunteer. We do a lot of different things, but it is incredibly fulfilling. This is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And I would encourage you to, to think about, you know, serving. You're here and I know you're interested, but I, I think it's really, at the end of the day, you'll be really glad that you did it. Jake, do you want to take the question about strategic initiatives? Thanks yeah, for sharing. Happy, happy to jump in. Um, the the organization is is has been focused um, for the past few years on sort of three key pillars of work. Um, the first is really around building community and uh, is centered on the work that our chapters do and continuing to invest in um, the growth uh, and sustainability of chapters. Um, that it is both to some extent uh, adding chapters where teachers are not currently served by one. We have, we have one state right now that does not um, have a chapter yet. Uh, and then also really deepening the work that chapters are doing as they establish as, um, as entities and, and, and thinking about how we can best support them to provide professional development to their local communities. Um, and the second key pillar is around professional learning and focused on career long professional learning. Uh, and that um, is a, a pretty open space right now, thinking about what will teachers need beyond the first week, uh, year, or few years of teaching computer science, where many computer science teachers are right now. And then the third area is around providing independent guidance to the field uh, and knowing that we as an organization are unique. We're not. Um, tied to a specific curriculum or funder or producer that that might limit our perspective. Uh, and I think the biggest way that plays out and thinking over the next few years is the CSTA standards, uh, specifically the standards for students. And um, those are due for a refresh in the uh, next question mark number of years. And the board will be thinking a lot about when that happens and what that process looks like. Um, and then I'd say the fourth behind the scenes uh, is, is ensuring that there's a strong operational foundation for the organization. The board takes part in that, um, thinking about uh, what sort of targets we should set in terms of the revenue uh, streams of the organization, what's healthy for us across different things like grants versus private funding versus um, membership dues or conferences and um, things like that. And, and I'll, I'll sort of add, I, I hinted at this, but you know, the, those pillars of work were really established uh, about four years ago now. So I think this next board, as it is you know, brought together in July, will get to think about whether that should be adjusted and what we should look at differently for the next few years. Uh, I'll jump in here uh, just I responded in the chat to Allison's question, so I thought, well, that's appropriate uh, time to jump in there. Um, but I will reiterate what Art said. It is wonderful to be Jake's boss. 
he is great to work with. And I did the punch cards too, Art, but it had the reverse effect on me. I thought, oh, this is pretty cool. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'm Cindy Chang. I'm the state representative on the board of directors currently. Um, and uh, this is probably one of the best decisions I ever made. I really enjoy working with folks who are passionate about the same things that I am. And this is the place because we all have that passion for um, broadening computer science in our spheres and, and really helping the global community. Um, so some of the things that I wanted to do coming in, not really knowing what the state representative role was, um, I went to Jake and I said, hey, what do you think about this idea? If we build this space, this community for all the other state um, CS supervisors, um, and he says, "Sure, why not? That's a great idea." <laughs> and so, together um, with each other and a, a partner, we were able to build that space. And so, we watched that community grow, and we have regular quarterly meetings, and hopefully, face to face soon. And so, it's it's just a place where everyone can go to grow, to learn, to share. And uh, that probably would not have happened if it weren't for this opportunity. Um, some other things that I've been able to work uh, with as a board member is um, building out resources for administrators who oversee um, folks who teach computer science. They may come in once in a while and not really know what it is that you're doing in your classroom. and you know, having those tools to recognize what's happening and, and the standards for teachers and so forth. And so that's been really a wonderful experience for me working with those folks. Um, I was also on the nomination and elections committee last time. I really enjoyed that, um, getting to know and, and read about all of the folks that, again, have that passion and want to be a part of it. And then most recently, part of the policy team um, that's just started out. And so it's that's really exciting to see what that where that group is going to go and the change that they're going to make. So that's a really exciting space as well. So those are some of the projects that I've been involved in. Yeah, in my role as uh, chair of the board, I've had the opportunity to do work in a lots of uh, different areas. Um, but some of the uh, more the interesting ones have been, uh, around the uh, CSDA teacher standards, working on uh, building resources for our teachers, including our uh, self-reflection checklist uh, that has been uh, in use for about a year and a half now. Um, and we're still working on making some new updates uh, and new resources around that uh, area. Uh, the International Committee has been uh, working on uh, discussing uh, you know, what's our next step with, uh, you know, the larger world community and CS Ed. Uh, so that's been a really interesting piece. One of the things that you'll find is every single board member uh, serves on one of those committees that we listed. Uh, their, their role is to go participate in those uh, committees and then come back and report to the board. Uh, so there's lots of opportunities there. And so um, as we have uh, board members that roll off, we'll be looking for uh, somebody new to fill in those uh, slots. So, um, you know, if there's areas that you're uh, definitely interested in and you uh, are elected, uh, please reach out to me so that I can uh, have in my mind who should probably be in certain committees. How many total board members are there in all? Good question. Um, we do, it fluctuates a bit because we do have some folks who are appointed board members and there's, unless somebody's got the CSTA page up right now. I the latest number is 18. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so there are um, mostly elected members and then there's several folks who are appointed from um, industry organizations. So we have a person who has some financial expertise and um, is serving as treasurer um, and helping lead the audit committee. And so there's some various appointed members like that in addition to all of the elected members. Other questions? Okay. 
So just give a, a perspective, and I don't want to call uh, anyone out, but Audra or Christine, would you want to share kind of your perspective from a K-8 teacher perspective? Sure, Christine, you might be able to add a little more even doing this longer than me, but um, I'm new. I joined last July, I think, um, and I'm on the nominations and elections committee, and I also work with Christine um, to do the weekly CSKA, the bi-weekly uh, CSKA chats um, with Vicki Sedgwick, which uh, is a lot of fun. Um, and I've also been able to help out a little bit with some other, uh, well, the meeting we had, was it last week? Give a little input on professional development and have other opportunities to help out in other areas aside from just this particular committee that I'm on, which I'm excited about. Um, and I'm also, um, in addition to the board, I'm one of the co-presidents of the Greater Boston Chapter, so I do a bit with them as well um, and try to bring some of that to the table. If I can, Christina, I don't know if you want to add anything. Yeah, just to reiterate that. Um, so we uh, participate, and, and I've been on the board for this is my second term uh, working, and so I've helped Vicky with that CSK chat that's on Twitter by by uh, twice a month, and then uh, my main focus right now is the conference. So. Um, updating the board on what the conference committee is doing and preparing for that conference. <laughs> which is going to be awesome. Which is, which is a big task in itself. <laughs> All right. I would probably also add that each one of the board members working on committees are partnered usually with a CSDA staff member. Uh, so there is a lot of work in conjunction with the staff. It's not just the volunteers um, doing, uh, of course we do a lot of the work, but we do have a lot of support from the CSDA staff uh, in those committees as well. And some of these folks are chairs of their, these committees, but then sometimes when you serve your little liaison to the board, so you don't have to do the work necessarily like scheduling the meetings and setting the agendas and all that. It's more of a support role and a communication channel, but we have lots of um, leaders who like to volunteer for things on the board as well. Other questions from folks who are here? You know, you... Again, you may not want to ask your question in this format, and I will drop the email address into the chat um, one more time too. You are more than welcome to email that nomination that csteachers.org address and ask like, am I a fit for this um, position eligibility? Is this the kind of experience you're looking for? Whatever it is, um, you have questions about filling out the application, feel free to reach out to us and um, Dan and I check that and we'll be more than happy to answer that, those questions for you. What disability area areas have you focused on for CS when it comes to equity? Um, I think depending on the programming, there's often um, learning disabilities and there has been some things for physical disabilities, especially I think visual impairments for students. Um, maybe a little bit less so for some of the other physical disabilities and that kind of thing, but I think that's always something the, the staff and the team are paying attention to. Jake? you want to add? Yeah, I would just add in, um, this is an area that CSTA is uh, going to be growing in. Uh, in part, we are um, a member of the uh, ACE Alliance, a uh, recently funded NSF Alliance for focused on identity of inclusive computing. Um, and another member of that is the DOIT Center out of the University of Washington, um, which is leading uh, some uh, leading work on um, how to increase accessibility for uh, students with disabilities in computer science and so excited about some of the work coming out of that uh, that that will happen in the next couple of years and in the shorter term uh, we uh, haven't released the details yet but since you are here uh, the we our third summit of the year uh, which is our uh, second annual equity and action summit will have a focus on um, supporting students with disabilities as well and so more details about that should be announced in the next couple of weeks but uh, Heidi definitely keep an eye out for that I think there's going to be some really um, 
the interesting content that, that we're developing and sharing. Not disability focused, but differentiating. Uh, Jake, do you want to talk a little bit about CS for EL? Uh, yes, also also happy to share uh, another project of CSTA is a Department of Education funded uh, grant um, CS for English learners. Art is a, a key member of that work in San Diego uh, and um, the work at Sweetwater uh, schools. Um, but we're developing uh, and implementing uh, professional development to support teachers uh, in increasing participation and success of students, English learners in AP computer science principles. Uh, and so we have our uh, first cohort of teachers, uh, they're actually finishing up their first year uh, this month uh, and are actively recruiting our second cohort. Uh, the, the project is focused on uh, Southern California, Arizona, and New Mexico. Uh, Yolanda also has, has worked with that project uh, in New Mexico um, and, and excited to, to see that grow and be able to implement it at a broader scale uh, after we, uh, as the grant continues. So Jake, I'm just gonna, uh, and I popped off my video here. So like, what I have found with COVID is that it has opened up doors for those of us who have like physical disabilities, right? Because even like tomorrow we have a, a meeting from Marquette University and I'm not driving there because I can't. So I'm joining remotely. Um, and I know that you specifically have really kind of, I think brought some issues to light and have focused on that. And I guess it's been my one barrier to like, joining the board and or I mean not joining but like applying for the board because I worry like like I just like my ability to travel is very limited but and it's so hard when you want to be face to face but you can't like is there any possibility that they would open up that requirement or are they nope it has to be face to face I can answer that the okay. so the board uh, although we have an in-person uh, meeting, we have had in the past where uh, some board members are not able to travel. And so we will uh, try to accommodate that by, you know, bringing in like Zoom or bringing in, um, you know, audio, um, you know, like phones and stuff like that. So there's, there are ways that we can accommodate that. So don't let that be a barrier for you. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. I'm getting up the nerve. I've worked with Jake on a couple of different things. I'm really getting up the nerve. <laughs> well, that means you, you, Jake's been doing a good job then. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's been doing a phenomenal job. Like we see him popping into the Wisconsin CSTA meetings. And I do a lot of work uh, with ISTE, and he's very prevalent, and his name is thrown a lot, a lot with ISTE. And, you know, I, I really, my area of, is a focus with ISTE is really computational thinking and that computer science piece. And, Jake's been instrumental. Like, I mean, he is an awesome person. Like, I, you guys could not have a better leader. And he did not pay me to say this, honestly. He <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Jen, do you want to wrap us up? Sure. So um, again, I'll just say, you know, thank you so much for being here tonight. Hopefully you got most of your questions answered and are seriously thinking or considering about applying to the board. Um, folks um, have shared a number of experiences that I think would be relevant for serving as a board member. And I think, um, you know, if you have questions um, beyond this, again, just to email us. Um, if you know, you know, you can find some of our names too, if you'd rather reach out to one or the other, uh, Dan or I, or somebody on the committee individually, you can do that too. Um, and then uh, look forward to reading applications as they come in. So excited to see um, what happens next. And then maybe we can pause the recording and deal with Gabriel's question. Okay, yep. great. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Have a good night.